Thank you for tuning in to another week of Heal and Emerge radio broadcast. My name is Wondrea Patterson. So this month we have been coming from the topic, doing the work. And we are on our fourth week of the topic. The first week we talked about, are you lifting up Jesus? The second week we talked about, look at and past your ugly. The third week we talked about, you must be born again. And this week we're going to talk about, believe and do not perish. Believe and do not perish. Um, Our topic is going to come from the book of John, and we are going to be looking at verses, I mean, chapter 3, verses 14 to 36. And as we talk about this topic, doing the work, each week we are identifying work that must be done if we are to live a triumphant life the way that God intended for us to live when he created us in his image and after his likeness when we talked about are you lifting up Jesus we focused on Moses and the rock and how Moses ended up not being able to go to the promised land because he did not hallow God when God gave him specific instructions to carry out in order that the children of Israel might have water to drink. God told Moses to take the rod and speak to the rock and it will yield water. And Moses, in his feelings, fussed at the children of Israel, showed his frustration took the rod, which is a symbol of the authority of God, and instead of letting that authority stand alone and do the work, just speak the word, Moses added his abilities into the miracle by taking the rod, the authority, and slamming it against the rock two times while he was fussing and saying, must we do this for you? Because he had got tired of the children of Israel complaining. And God punished Moses for that. His punishment was that he wouldn't be able to go into the promised land because God did not like the fact that Moses added his strength to a miracle that was set aside for God's glory, for God alone. And so the first week we talked about that. And um, the question was, if you look at your own life, are there areas where you are not hallowing God, where you are um, putting your strength and your energy into things um, that God is saying, I alone can do this and you are putting your power behind it and taking God's credit. So we asked a lot of different questions about that for week one. Week two, we talked about look at and past your ugly because we came from Numbers chapter 21, which the first week we came from Numbers chapter 20 verses 1 through 13. And then the second week, we came from Numbers 21, chapters 1 through 8. And by the time we reached chapter 21 of Numbers, God was tired of the children of Israel and their complaints because it was just a, a, a repeat a repeat thing for them. They would go a few steps and God would, would bless them or provide for them. And then they go a few steps and complain again. And that was like something that was consistent in their life. God give them victory in certain areas. God provide food for them. He provided um, heat for them. He provided cover for them when it was too hot. He did a lot of things for them. And they could not um, get past complaining, murmuring and complaining. 
and reminiscing about Egypt when they were slaves and how good that was. So by the time we reached Numbers chapter 21, um, God was tired because they had called the bread that God was giving them to eat worthless. And they said, they said a lot of things, but that was something that got my attention because the bread that God gives us is the bread of life. And I just think about being in the desert, being in the wilderness and, and God providing bread from heaven and, and just as a spirit, a spiritual thing, getting bread directly from God, how could that not be something that's reverenced and seen as life giving? And good bread, but the children of Israel called it worthless. And so God got tired and and sent the snakes, and we've talked about that. And he sent snakes to bite them. And when he sent the snakes to bite them, they went praying again. We've sinned, we're sorry. And then God told Moses to make a fiery serpent and put it on a pole. And whoever looks at it, if they've been bitten, they would be healed. And we talked about looking at and past your ugly. You know, God God made their ugly manifest in real time and and brought home to them the fact that what you are thinking was so good is not good at all. And when they could look at the ugly in them and just the ugly in general, the ugly that was controlling them and then how that ugly had gotten inside of them and penetrated their spirits to the point where it had convinced them that it was good for them because that's how the devil operates. He's outside of us. He does something to seduce us and in Eve's case it was seducing her with the fruit and in the children of Israel's case it was enslaving them and then providing for them the way that 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 they that he wanted to provide for them reducing them to less than human but providing you know whatever portion or whatever um, behavior whatever treatment that he wanted to provide and they saw that as a blessing because that's how the enemy works. He he keeps, he's very persistent. He keeps going and then he convinces you that he's actually good for you while he's, while he's killing and stealing and destroying you. And so God had them see, he wanted them to see the enemy for what the enemy was, but he wanted them to see how the enemy had gotten in them and the ugly that was outside of them. The enemy had become an ugly inside of them and that they needed to be able to see that in order to be healed, in order to be saved, in order to be delivered and in order to be set free. They had to understand what is good and what is not. They had to be clear about that. Clear that this is evil and this is good. And in in lifting up that ugly and being able to look and see what that ugly was, but know that God is greater than the ugly. So to look at it, but look past it. And look at how big and awesome and powerful and loving God is. And that no matter what comes against you, that if God be for you, he's more than the world against you. But you have to connect to that love, that power. And in order to connect with that power, you have to be clear on what the evil is, what the ugly is. And so that is what God was trying to get them to do. Look at it, but look past it. So when we talked about look at and past your ugly in week two, that was what we were, um, that's what we were focusing on. Being clear on what the evil is so that you can 
appreciate the goodness of God and the grace and mercy that he has for us, but being very clear on what is evil. Um, And then last week we talked about you must be born again. And we came from John chapter three, verses one through 14. And we talked about how um, Nicodemus had came to God and he wanted to know what what is being saved? What is it that must happen? And Jesus said, you must be born of the spirit. You have to be able to see clearly what evil is and you have to repent from the evil in your life. Be clear on it, repent of it, and then ask Jesus, the rock, to come into your life and to save you. Then that is how you are able to be born again. It's a spiritual thing, not a natural thing. We were born wrong because of the experience of eating the forbidden fruit that happened in the garden. We were born into sin, but we must be born again if we want to see the kingdom of God. You must be born again. Jesus told Nicodemus that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. But in order for you to be born of the spirit, you have to be clear on what is good and what is evil. What is the snake and what is the love of God? You have to be clear on that. What is what is what in you? is good in God and what in you is a result of being born into sin, your lust. What is what is being disguised as evil to make you think that you're okay and you don't need to make that decision to be born again. So that was um what we talked about on week three, you must be born again. And this week we are going to talk about believe and do not perish. Believe and do not perish. And we are coming from the book of John chapters three verses 14 through 36. Now we're going to go ahead and read our foundation scripture, which we read every week coming from the book of Isaiah chapter 55 verses 8 to 11 and it reads for my thoughts are not your thoughts nor are your ways my ways says the lord for as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts for as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing which I sent it." And we know that we read this scripture every week because we want to make sure that we are communicating with God as we go into the word that we know that our thinking is, is not, is not good thinking that we born of the flesh, as he was telling Nicodemus last year, that which is born, I mean, last week, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That when we're born into the flesh, when we're born into sin, that we have a stinking thinking. Our thoughts are not good. They're evil. And our 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 motives, our drive in life, born into that sinful state, is all about... Uh, self. It's not about God. It's it's selfish. Um, It's about our abilities. It's about our desires. It's about our lusts. So we have stinking thinking. 
And God is saying our thoughts are not his thoughts. His thoughts are not our thoughts. That and his ways are not our ways. They're much higher. So we know, knowing that we have that stinking thinking, even when we're born again, that's something that we have to keep um, cleansing ourselves of uh, so that we can always make sure that our focus is right. You know, I remember listening to a message um, when I had first gave my life to Christ. Um, And the message was, how clean are you? And the pastor was saying that each time that you go out into life, it doesn't matter how clean you, you were the second before you went out into life. Each time you go out into life, you have been contaminated. And that cleansing is something that has to be continuous. That's why the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. The more you study, the more that word cleanses you. And the the word is what cleans you. It's not something that we can do ourselves. Be clean by the washing of the water by the word. So whatever it is that, um, that we are... Uh, flowing in in our natural self God is saying that that is dirty water and the word is what washes the water the washing of the water by the word the word is what cleanses you and so you have to get into a, a zone to where your focus is what is God's thoughts what are God's ways and as I read this word, I want God to to impart his thoughts and his ways onto me so that I can get everything that he desires for me to have so that I can live the best life possible um, on this side of life. I want that. And so when we read that scripture, that's what we're saying. We're saying, move us out of the way, God, so that we can get everything that you have for us. We also do our prayer, which comes from Matthew chapter 6, verses 9. And it says, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So today in reading this prayer, what stuck out to me is the second line, hallowed be your name. And what stuck out to me is that we, a lot of people throw the name of Jesus around, you know, they use Jesus, they use God as a, a a weapon, you know, like, um, don't mess with me, you know, cause God, you know, I'm God, I'm a child of God or, uh, Jesus, you know, Jesus, you know, just using Jesus name loosely and using it, um, as a, as a solution to a situation, but not saying it in a, in a way that you reverence that name, not hallowing that name, using it as a weapon, just like Moses used that rod. And Moses was punished for doing that. He didn't make it to the promised land. So when we say the name of God, when we say the name of Jesus, it says, hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. We know God takes it serious because the first week God got mad with Moses and said, you did not hallow me. You used me as a weapon to bring water out of the rock. You took my word that I told you to speak. So once we read um, in Isaiah that once the word of God goes forth, that it won't return to him void. It will accomplish what he sent it to do. So once God spoke the word to Moses, the word had went forth. It was going to do what, what God sent it to do. But Moses 
took it and used it as a weapon. When God was functioning and operating from a position of love, his, his, his word is to be hallowed. It's going to accomplish what he sends it out to do. It's going to prosper in whatever he sent it. But when we know the word, it's going gonna, it's gonna to do what it says it's going to do. God is not a God that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent. If he speaks things, he'll bring it to pass. And so we know that as believers and we, we take that, but that knowledge and we use God as a weapon to fight our enemies, whether we are right or wrong, we take our knowledge of the word while we live in raggedy lives, while we doing everything we big and bad enough to do, while we know we're not in line how we should be, while we in our feelings because of something that happened or something that was said or something that didn't happen. And we take the word and we we aim it at people as a weapon in Jesus name oh god have mercy these type of things this religious stuff and we are not hallowing the name of god and god is not pleased with that so that's what stuck out to me um in the prayer hallow be thy name um now we're just gonna go ahead and move right into um our topic for this week. Believe and do not perish. We're coming from John chapter three, verses fourteen through thirty-six. And let's see, we might um I think I'll start just reading the, the chapter three. I probably will read chapter three, verses one through 21, which I know was a lot, but it's kind of picking up with the Nicodemus topic that um, we started with last week. And it's just reading this whole little section, which is the new birth and um, putting everything into context. And then we'll talk about um, our topic, believe and do not perish. So here beginneth the reading of God's word. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these things that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, He cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the spirit. That was what Jesus response was to Nicodemus. So here Nicodemus answers Jesus and says, how can these things be? And then Jesus answers him again and say, are you the teacher of Israel and do not know these things? So that's, I'm going to put a pause right there for a minute. Um, When people are religious, they study the word. You can study the word with your own thoughts and with your own mind. And when you study it with your own thoughts and your own mind, the things that are simple um, scripture says God takes the simple things to confound the wise. Um, the simple things that you, you have to pick up in the spirit through discernment, you don't pick up because you're reading the word literally or you're inserting your experience into um, what the word is saying and you're coming from 
your your way of thinking about it and 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 your ways your behavior and god says our thoughts and our ways are not his thoughts and his ways is what we have to when we go into the word put ourselves to the side we have to do that intentionally so that we can get out of it what god says so jesus is saying to nicodemus in this case Nicodemus was a teacher of the word of God and being a teacher of the word of God, Jesus is saying you're a teacher and you don't know these things. And then he says, this is still Jesus speaking. Most assuredly, I say to you, when, I mean, we speak what we know and we testify what we have seen and you do not receive our witness. If I had told you earthly things, and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? So Jesus is saying to him, if if you don't get it by the spirit, you won't get it. Because I can tell you things that you should get in the natural. That's very simple that you should understand. And you're not getting that. So if I'm telling you something heavenly or something spiritual, then if you ain't trying to align yourself with God's thoughts and God's ways, you're not going to get that either. So then Jesus goes on to say, no one has ascended to heaven, but he who has come down from heaven, that is the son of man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up, and this is where I want us to focus, because remember, and um, we talked week one, when we talked about the rock and then the serpents coming, or week two, when we said, look at him, Pastor Ugly, how Moses had to lift the serpent up. Here's Jesus making reference to that. He's saying, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. Jesus is the son of man. And it says that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men loved darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. Now we're tying this up and if you were following week one, week two, and week three, this should be making sense and everything should be becoming more clear. Um, Verse 20 says, for everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. So talking about the snake, talking about the wilderness, looking at and past your ugly, that's what these verses are talking about. That evil, evil has to be exposed. And once that evil is exposed, then that is how salvation happens. That Jesus came to save us. And in order for him to save us, he has to separate light from darkness. And some people are going to be attracted to evil like the children of Israel. They kept lifting up evil, want missing Egypt. God sent the snakes to bring clarity and then said, look at that snake. Look at the evil. Be clear on what evil is. And know that I can save you from that evil. And if you look at it and you clear on it, then you'll be saved. Because being clear about what evil is and, and, and wanting to be saved, meaning you reject the evil and you choose the good. You choose God. And so that is what believing and do not perish is all about. It's about choosing life. God says, I I place before you blessings and cursings, life and death. Choose life that you and your descendants may live. Be clear on what evil is. And you find that clarity in the word. 
We read that everything that was read tonight brought everything home to where you could see exactly what God was doing in the wilderness. And when Jesus was hanging on that cross ugly with all of our sins reflected on him, we needed to be clear of what evil and good was. Until next week, be blessed. Give your life to Christ. Be born again.